U novom izdanju emisije Oni vole Srbiju upoznat ćemo futbalera partizana Natana Demedinu. Belgijski štoper, rođen 1997. godine, prošao je mlađe selekcije Anderlechta, a od ove sezone obukao je dres partizana i zadužio broj 25. O karijeri, partizanu i detinstvu čućemo u narednim minutima. Firminio, ne bre, to je soldado. Saudaja, sim, Mateo, saudaja. Registrujte se i mi vam poklanjem 11 puta po 2000 dinara. Plus svaki dan free spinovi, a utorkom u loyalty cashback. Bez uzlova, majke mi. Thank you so much for being part of the TV show today. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Now, while I was waiting for you, the producer told me that before you came here, you were walking your dog because you have a dog, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of dog? Uh, American Akita. Oh, okay, it's nice. It's yeah, it's nice. A big one, 60 like, kilo. So, oh, yeah, the big one. It's a very big one, <laughs> it's yeah. It's a big one. So, you know, we have a lot of topics today, but in this uh, first part of the show, was like to get to know my guests. You were born in uh, Belgium, mm -hmm. right? I'm from Congo. Okay. My two parents are from Congo. Uh, my mother bo uh, was born in Belgium and my father in Congo. In Congo. So yeah, I have nothing to do with Cabo, Cabo Verde. That's a very big mistake actually, because everywhere is written. Yeah. I, I told them to change it, but they take time so to do it. Oh my god, yeah. The trick even me, I thought it was the Cape Verde, but... Okay, so your, parent, your parents are originally from uh, Congo. Yeah. And they speak French, right? But yeah, but my mother language is French. Okay. So we all talk French together at home, with family, and my friends. Uh -huh. uh, but I've been in a Flemish school. Okay. Um, so I can speak both. Both. Okay, but when I ask you if you used to preserve the tradition, I wasn't only thinking about the language, but the tradition from Congo at home. Yeah, of course. Uh, you, t you, you, you talk about culture, food and everything. Uh-huh, yes. yeah, tradi yeah, traditions, uh, celebrations, food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All my friends are, most of my friends are from Congo. Okay. I mean, they're from Belgium, but there are many Congolese people in mm -hmm. Belgium, in Brussels, especially. We still have this culture, even in, in our friendships and mm -hmm. my family as well. So, yeah. You know what I wanted to ask you? This is a topic that I'm not mentioning many times because uh, I need to have the guest mm -hmm. for this type of question. Um, you were born in a country, in Belgium, it's your home town it's your home it's your country because you were born over there but at home you had another tradition it's difficult to be in the middle of two cultures I understand what you mean but uh, no I didn't feel anything difficult in that mm -hmm. so to me it was I was born there and you, you, you feel like you're from Belgium not yeah. Congo Congo is just the heritage of your parents um, Yes, I mean, I also feel that uh, I'm okay. from Congo, but um, I'm more familiar with the language, uh, which is French, which mm -hmm. is uh, the language we talk in Belgium. I have been two times in Congo, so I don't really know about the country. Oh. I know a lot about the history and stuff like that, okay. but not about the country. So I feel I'm just a European and from Belgium. You're from so, Belgium. Yes, uh, yeah. And tell me, so, about your childhood in uh, Belgium. How was growing up in Belgium? Uh, I was in, I was, I raised in Brussels. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my favorite city, this is my everything. In the world? Your favorite city in the world yeah. or generally? Yeah, this is where I feel home. Okay. So, um, for example, I, I like Belgrade, I like, um, New York, I like all these cities, but where I feel home is Belgium. Belgium, right. So, everybody's there, uh, always waiting for me when I come back from mm -hmm. Belgrade. And, uh, you know, the, the most important is to be uh, uh, with people that love you, 
Mm -hmm. And this is what I have in Belgium, so okay. this is where I feel good. Right, and when it comes to your football journey. Yeah. When uh, your football journey started? In Anderlecht, mm -hmm. which is in Brussels. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I'm really a Brussels boy. Okay. So, a city boy. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I played in Anderlecht for, I guess, more than 10 years, 12 mm -hmm. years. Um, I started there and I made my debut there as well. Mm -hmm. I had also um, elite school there. Okay. And after that, I was still in Brussels. No, I mean, it's just next to Brussels, but it's called Louvain. Leuven, it's another city. I played there for six months. And after that, uh, I played for three years in Mucron. Okay. It's not in Brussels, one hour from Brussels. And uh, there's a specific reason why you decided to start football? It's a family oh, tradition uh, no. or you just... Um, I don't really know why I started football. I think everybody started football because he likes to play football when he's young. In Europe, everybody's playing football. Exactly. Uh, and and my dad was also uh, working uh, in football. Okay. Uh, he was working with uh, African uh, players. Mm -hmm. uh, and he brought them from Africa to Europe. He was taking care of them and tried to help them to succeed in Europe. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so that's the point. Your the, family has a connection with sports. Yes, so for this but this is not really the reason why I started football, mm -hmm. to play football. Or did you have an idol when you were little? You always, so someone you looked up to or no? No, not really. No? <laughs> no. no, that's, a, <laughs> that's honest, so honest. No. <laughs> that's an honest No, no to be honest, I, I, I don't know. Um, I used to watch football my entire life, but uh -huh. I like everyone. Um, to me, the best player ever is Ronaldinho. Uh huh. Okay. But I'm not a, a really fan of Ronaldinho. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, I um, understand. I understand. You respect your colleagues, but you don't have a, an idol. That's the point. Exactly. Yeah. So now you tell me something about your career a mm -hmm. few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So now I wanted I wanted to ask you, what's the turning point in your career? The moment when you understood that something is changing, that from you through it's becoming more serious. Um, when I became professional and I stopped school. Okay. okay. <laughs> so that was to me uh, the beginning of something. Uh -huh. Yeah. You were happy in that moment? Of course. I had my Your first injury? professional contract. And how, wa how was this first? Uh, 17 years old. Okay, this first experience. Was that difficult? Was it hard? Do you have to struggle with a lot of things? A mixture of emotions? Of course, yeah. You have some good days and bad days in football. Mm -hmm. Especially in the beginning when you're young. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not always easy to play with uh, grown men. Um, but I had. Uh, I had uh, my brothers, my father behind me, so it helped me a lot. I have the support of the family, which is very important, right? Yeah, this is, to me, this is everything, yeah. And especially because in sports, I have the impression that there's not space to make a mistake. Everything is happening very fast. Mm -hmm. You need to take the opportunity to take, right? Yeah, there is a, a lot of pressure. Yeah. And as my father knew this, not as a player, but as someone who takes care of players, so he, he knew how to help me with that. So um, that was, to me, that was um, the most important thing in the beginning. So, you know, I would like now to talk about Partizan, but if you agree, we can go to the restaurant, grab some food, because you told me that you never try Serbian food. All right, let's go. Right? Would yeah. you like to try something yeah, and talk about yeah. Partizan? Okay, let's go. Let's go. So, Nathan, we came to the restaurant and since we came here, you took a picture with the owners, a very big partisan fans. So this connection with the fans, you like this in Belgrade? Yeah, of course. I said it also in, uh, 
earlier um, interview okay. that uh, this is one of the things I like the most here, mm -hmm. fans, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to mention that because as we came inside, he was like, okay, I'm a very big fan of yours, can we have a picture? And I saw that you were happy about that, that people recognize you, that people like Spartan, they're cheering for you, so it's very nice, right? Yeah, yeah, it's always a good feeling to have support, uh, mm -hmm. to see that uh, people are very close to the team as well. So, um, yeah, it gives me power to give everything on the pitch. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I wanted to continue this conversation, but there's a big problem. We have all this amazing food here. I don't want this food to get cold. And why I want you to try? Because you told me that you never tried Serbian food. This is a very traditional restaurant. You see the environment. I hope you like it. I, I like it so much, actually. This is so, so pretty. Yeah, so this is the first time I come in a place like that. So this you is, like it, that's important. Yeah, that's I like important. it, I like it. So yeah. this is very uh, traditional. So I will try now. I don't know how it's... Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, this is, you know, pleskavits is a stuffed pleskavits. It's like minced meat Okay. with cheese. We have uh, stuffed pork. We have uh, chivap, it's the same meat. So let's <laughs> try it. Okay, we have a little bit of appetizers here. Cheese, kaimak, which you should try kaimak, it's very good, it's always my recommendation. Mm -hmm. So, let's try. Okay, let's go. Ah, yeah, this is like, I think, goat cheese, not sure. So this is, one, this is from Serbia? Sure. Goat cheese? Sure, yeah, we have a lot of goats here. Okay, <laughs> I think you can find goat cheese everywhere. I think, you, exactly, exactly, <laughs> you can find that everywhere. So we don't have Serbian uh, Serbian squids, but we have Serbian goat. That's okay. actually very good. So let's try the, the meat. I want to see. Okay, tell me how was this so far? So you've tried Pretty the ham. Good. good. Nice. Yes. And I'll try this. I need to Just try this. this. This is the healthy one. This is the healthy one. And I want to turn this because I want you to try the the cheese, the kaimak, which is very good. Now you eat whatever you we want. We eat man. with hands in Africa. We can, you can try, if it's easier no, no, for uh, you with the hand. Actually, I eat roya and these things with the hand because it's easier. Yeah, it's like okay. bread, it's instead of bread, if you don't want to eat bread, you eat this, so. Okay, so this is good, this one. It's good, yeah. it's healthy. This is the healthy one. And that one is with cheese. So, that's good, I like it. And do you like meat or you are a meat hater? Because a lot of professional, I noticed that a lot of professional sports lately are avoiding meat. They're not eating meat. What's your point of view from? I eat meat. You eat meat, yeah. It's important, especially for sports. I mean. It's important, you said? Um, I don't know, we have this debate every time in the dressing room. Okay. Especially in Germany. Okay. Um, because many players uh, have watched this movie. Um, the damages of meat to the body. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember the name exactly, but. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, but I tried a week of two, but okay. I, I can't live without meat, so. Okay. Yeah, I respect that because I saw that lately a lot of professional sports are vegetarian, but it's different because they said that meat bothers them, their body. So that's another pair of shoes, you know, that's how do you feel about that? But saying that meat, it's bad nowadays, but we're not doctors, we don't care about that. Let's eat the meat, yeah. okay? <laughs> Let's go. What would you like to try? Do you want so to wait a minute. So this is the same as this, right? No, because you have the soft glass over there. This and this. This is this is this. I'm not sure. I can't see. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. And uh, you have like the little bites with the plum over there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me and try. Try whatever you want. So you can try a little bit of everything because I really would like to know your opinion. Mm. Your... I like, I, I, I love bacon. Okay, I like So, yeah. Great. This one, I think I will like all those mm -hmm. with bacon. 
So I want you now to focus on other topics. I would like to talk about partisan. You came to partisan in September, right? Mm -hmm. This last year. So I wanted to ask you what attracted you to partisan. Why did you choose partisan? I had some offers in Second League Germany. Mm -hmm. But to me, that was the most interesting because I also played with many partisan players before. So they were always talking good about Brass Partisan. Mm -hmm. I know that it's a good club, big club, um, and they always play Europa League or whatever. Mm -hmm. It depends year by year. But I was attracted because um, I really wanted to play uh, Europa League or Champions League. Mm -hmm. So um, that this is a dream for me, and this is what I really want to. This is why I'm here, and this is why I we really want to help the team to play this kind of competition. You choose number 25, right, on your jersey. This number has a specific value for you, or yes, but very personal. Okay, very personal. So you yeah. don't want to share this. No, with no, that. really, no. Okay, I, I understand that and I respect that. Uh, mentioning partisan, you told me that you played with partisan players before in Germany. And uh, I read an interview of yours that was very interesting to me. Yeah, you said I that, <laughs> that in Belgium, when you talk about Serbian soccer, everybody's mentioning partisan, right? Yes. I mean, to me, uh -huh. to me, um, I always played with partisan players. So um, this is why I was always hearing about partisan uh, at first in Serbia. So this is what I said to the, in the last interview. I know that many people didn't dislike it, but it is what it is, you know. So I have played with uh, Antonov, with uh, Nikola Gulon, mm -hmm. with uh, Obradovic, with uh, Mitrovic, mm -hmm. and all the and. Also, I played in Anderlecht for so many years, and I remember them to play. They were playing against Partizan when I was younger, mm -hmm. and I was in the stadium. Uh, I remember they lost, I think. They lost a penalty or something like that. So to me, I, this is the first, when I hear about Serbia, I, to me, Partizan is the first thing that comes to mind. So tell me about working with the coach today. Duri has a very specific relationship with his players, right? So tell me how he's working with him. Um, so as I said, he has uh, he's a passionate coach. He's very close to his uh, players. And um, he's a young coach as well. So this helps also the team to be, um, to be closer and he understands everything about the game because he also played football. Um, so this is very interesting to have uh, him as a trainer because you can learn uh, a lot of him. Okay, so now I would like to go a little bit back a few weeks ago, in, back in time, playing against Veza, you know, the big rival of Partizan, you know, the energy, all the emotions during that game. How was that from your side? I have played many, many derbies and it's always a lot of pressure mm -hmm. um, so it's different everywhere um, in Serbia or in Germany in Belgium uh, but I, uh, I have heard that it's it's even more crazy when you play outside because the stadium can be full mm -hmm. we don't play with, with our fans for the moment so um, I'm really um, excited to, to to be there for the game. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be soon, right? Very soon, yeah, yeah. Very soon, you're ready for that? Yeah. You're, yeah? Yeah. No, oh, Firmino. No, bro, you're a soldier. Saldanha, Sebo. Mateo Saldanha. Registrujte se i mi vam poklanjem 11 puta po 2000 dinara, plus svaki dan free spinovi, a utorkom loyalty cashback. Nes uz lovo, majke mi.
we talk, talk a little bit about partisan and about football, but you know what I want to know now? How is going the other part? How living in Belgrade, your life here, so how is going this part? So as I, as I, I told you, I don't know too much about Belgrade. Mm -hmm. um, I know about Waterfront. Yeah, uh, how do you feel? You know, it's not about how many places do you know. How, how do, do I feel, feel inside yeah. the city? Um, good, because you have many things to do. Um, you never, uh, I mean, I have lived in cities in Germany mm -hmm. that were very boring. So this one is, um, you always have something to do and mm -hmm. this is how I feel good when I do something, when I go out and when I don't spend, don't spend my time at home and in front of the TV. So I also like the people, uh, people are very nice to me. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I love the atmosphere and everything, yeah. Yeah, people are very nice. Serbs knows how to be welcoming, right? Exactly, yes. So definitely you like here. Yeah. That's the most important thing. You're yes. happy that you choose parties and you choose Belgrade. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised because I, I didn't know that Belgrade, I didn't know nothing about Serbia. Uh -huh. uh, um, I didn't know that Belgrade was uh, such a good city. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that at all, so I'm very surprised. Even my family and everybody, they, when they come to visit me, they're very surprised about the city because we have a bad opinion about this kind of... Part of Europe. You understand me, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's not, but... Um, it's not what, 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 how people think. So um, I have seen many cities in the other part of Europe, uh, and I mean, this is a city that is way better than many of those. That's very nice to hear. That's yeah. very, very nice. And I'm very happy that you changed your mind after coming here. I want to thank you so much for this interview. And we wrap up this show in a different way. You see this cam camera behind me? This is your camera. If you want to send the message to wrap up to the fans, you can do it. Uh, so hi, uh, partisan fans. I hope to see you soon in stadium.